We have a massive opportunity. How often has a wealth transfer of this scale and technological breakthrough of this magnitude occurred in the last few decades? Probably the last time this has happened is back in the tech bubble in the early 2000s. That's what crypto represents today. Big institutions like BlackRock are pouring into crypto. Pension funds are pouring into crypto. Big corporations are realizing that decentralization is the way forward to make their processes more efficient. And that is why we have one of the biggest opportunities in financial history right now. And you have the chance to capitalize right now. There are so many crypto sectors where we're just at the beginning. Think AI, think gaming. These could all be transformative in their respective niches. But there is a very large chance that you're going to screw it up if you don't listen to what I'm about to tell you in today's video because I'm giving you some wisdom today that I learned from last bull run in 2021 where I made millions of dollars in paper profits but ended up round tripping most of them because I made 10 fatal mistakes that I don't want you to make this time around. So if you're even remotely interested in maximizing this bull run and taking advantage of the opportunity that's at hand, watch this entire video, take notes, take in these lessons and apply them to your own investing. And I promise if you do this, you could be on the path to financial riches much, much sooner than you think. Before I get into these 10 very important lessons, I want to firstly thank everyone that's recently joined the family. The growth of the channel, all the support that I feel, the love every single day on these shows, it means so much to me starting this channel from scratch to see the community we've been able to build in such a short amount of time. I want to say thank you, my sincerest appreciation. I will keep doing my best every single day to bring you the alpha in these shows, to repay the faith that you've shown in me. And I really, really appreciate it. Let's absolutely smash this bull run. Let's make some money together. Let's succeed together because doing this together is so much better than doing it alone. That's actually a side note of a lesson that I learned from last bull run. It's really, really hard to succeed on your own. And I understand that as someone that started in 2019 in crypto on his own, just researching this, trying to like tell his parents at the dinner table what this Bitcoin thing was, what this Ethereum thing was. And it was like speaking to a brick wall. Now being able to share this knowledge with you guys five years later and be able to share my mistakes in today's video, uh, it's an absolutely awesome position to be in and it's an absolute privilege. So if you aren't already subscribed, click the subscribe button, hit that post notification bell. On this channel, I give you altcoin guides, strategies like in today's video, trading opportunities, airdrops, and much, much more to help you succeed in the market. Without further ado, let's get into the first lesson. These are gonna be things that you need to avoid doing in the bull run. The first thing you've got to avoid is don't chase pumps. This is the easiest way to wreck yourself in an uptrending market. Every single day, there is a new coin, new hot narrative, new trend that's going to be the new flavor of crypto YouTube and crypto Twitter. The thing is, these days, the bull market rotations are happening at such a rapid pace, much faster than they've ever happened before. And because of this quickness and this fickleness, it's very easy to fall into the trap of chasing pumps in the market. Let's just look at some of the current categories in crypto. It seems like every single week, there is a new trend that's taking off. There'll be news about RWAs. That will be the hot narrative of the week. Then it will switch to the layer ones. They'll start pumping. Everyone will divert attention there. Then the meme coins will start pumping. Then everyone will be talking about meme coins. Then NFTs will go on a run. Everyone will talk about NFTs. Then it will go back into gaming and then back into AI. And it's just like we're, we're playing this narrative hot potato game. And the problem is if you succumb to this game of chasing narratives and chasing coins, you're going to end up buying into a lot of pumps near the top and you're never really going to solidify yourself in the narratives you have conviction in because you're constantly hopping. So this is something I did last bull run. I chased a bunch of pumps. Every time a token would pump, I'd want to buy that coin because it was the new shiny coin that was pumping. What I would tell you is stay steadfast in your conviction in select narratives. So sit down, Work out the narratives that you're most bullish on. I talk about some that I'm bullish on in these shows. I'm very bullish on AI. I'm very bullish on gaming. I'm bullish on the layer one narrative. There are a few key narratives that, that I'm personally investing in. Some DeFi stuff I find really interesting. But you have to work out the narratives that you're bullish in because your conviction shouldn't change week by week. If you're a crypto gaming bull and gaming is a bit quiet for two weeks whilst meme coins run, you shouldn't be shifting out of gaming into meme coins. If your thesis has stayed the same and your conviction stayed the same, don't chase the pump in the new hot narrative. If you're a trader, trading strength is always a great idea. But if you're an investor, sometimes 
Having your accumulation list, sticking to those projects instead of overtrading is actually the best thing to do. And I would recommend for most people that aren't full-time in crypto, condense your portfolio down to as little coins as possible. Look, I'm full-time crypto. I'm doing this every day. If I hold 30, 40 coins, that's manageable. Even for me, I find it overwhelming sometimes, but I can manage those positions. If you're only spending 30 minutes, an hour a day on crypto, try and condense it to less than 20 coins. In an ideal world, 10 really core diversified positions are all you need. So you can actually stay up to date with the latest announcements, stay up to date with the price action, de-risk if you need to, buy back in if you need to. All that stuff can be done when you're managing a small amount of positions. Much harder when you're over-diversified. So one little tip I'll give for you today, take a look at your portfolio. Is it taking too much time to manage? If you're finding it a bit crazy, condense it. If you don't have high conviction in something, condense it to a more manageable basket of assets and accumulate those assets. Now moving on to lesson number two, which follows on from the previous point, and that's don't go in without a plan. Before you buy any coin in the market, come up with a plan that clearly specifies why you're buying, what's your thesis, conduct a SWOT analysis. So what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities? And what are the threats for that coin? evaluate it properly, assign it a percentage of your portfolio, and then write down your sell plan. What I recommend doing is starting a Google Sheets or an Excel where you have all your tokens, you have your analysis, and you have your buy and sell plan written down. That way you have clear invalidations if something in the market changes, or if the market goes on a crazy dump, you can line that up with your thesis and reevaluate whether your thesis has actually changed or whether you're being emotionally affected by price. Because I'll tell you what, what most people do in the market is they like a coin, they buy the coin, the market dumps, they start questioning why they're holding the coin in the first place because they didn't really have a plan, they didn't really have a thesis. And then it's very easy to just sell that coin or not have the conviction. So you just rotate into other coins that are trending and then you're going to get wrecked because those tokens are going to crash and the coin that you sold off that you bought originally, then it will run and then you're going to FOMO back in higher. This happens so much in the market. People chase pumps because they don't plan correctly. So point one and two go hand in hand, come up with a plan, clearly outline your thesis. Even the act of writing it down just trains you mentally to be a better investor and you'll actually spot things from sticking to a process that you wouldn't normally spot if you were just aping. And that leads me to point number three, don't blindly ape. A little research goes a long way in a bull run. So here's the thing to understand about a crypto bull run. Hype in a bull usually trumps fundamentals. Narratives lead the market. It's actually not individual tokens which often lead the market, although they can be catalysts for narratives. Generally, a narrative will lead the market and the token underneath those narratives, they're the ones that decide to run. So before you invest in a coin, although you're accepting that hype is going to trump fundamentals, there are some very basic things you need to research in your due diligence to make sure at least you're getting into a legitimate investment and understand that investment. So I'll just run through a very quick process, a very, very, very quick process, and I could do a whole video on due diligence. Let's pick a random coin, Render for example. The first thing you would look at is its market cap and FDV. You would compare the valuation, not the price, Price means nothing. Valuation is what matters. Compare that to other projects in the niche. Is it overvalued, undervalued? This will help you assess the upside by working out, okay, it's 6 billion. It's probably not going to pull 100x because then the token price would need to go to 600 billion. Unlikely. Can it go to 60 billion? Maybe. So maybe it's a 10x or 100x. That just helps. Just look at the valuation. That's the first thing I look at. Second thing is the narrative. Is it underneath a hot narrative? Yes, it's AI. I'm bullish on AI. That's a very important thing. The third thing you've got to work out is whether it's price responsive to that narrative. When AI runs, does render pump. If it doesn't, it's not being treated underneath that narrative. So if you're using it as a narrative proxy, it's probably not a very effective one. So you need to make sure it runs and runs in tandem, if not more, when it does exhibit strength than the other coins under that same narrative. And then for other basic things of due diligence, read the white paper. So on CoinGecko, it's amazing because they have the white paper. You click on the white paper, read through it, understand what they do. That will help you conduct your SWOT analysis as I spoke about before. Go into their Twitter. Are they botting engagement? Are they engaged with the audience? Are they teasing announcements? Get a grasp for that. And the other thing that is really, really, really important before I invest in a project is looking at the backers. So I always like to see these big name VCs, your Panteras, your Paradigms, your Multicoins, your hash keys for gaming, things like Animoca. I always look at these big VCs to see if they're backing. 
So Render does have a lot of those big backers. It's an Slightly older token, so the VCs that were popular them, Alameda was actually one of them, um, invested. Multicoin has obviously been a very successful investor along with Solana, Vinny, etc. But you can do this for any project. So this is why I love crypto rank. Like if you want to search up an upcoming project like Alora, which I'm an investor in, you can go and see that Polychain, Delphi, etc. are in. These are very strong VCs. And that is the very first thing I'll even look at before investing in a project, whether it be liquid or early stage. I always want to know who the backers are. The next thing you can do to go further is look through the tokenomics in the white paper. See when the VCs are getting their unlocks. You don't want to buy just before an unlock. The projects that tend to pump the most are the ones where VCs aren't constantly dumping on your head. Either they've got like a long cliff or tokens are very slowly being distributed into the market. Those are just a few points. I can do a video on this in the future if you want my full step-by-step -step guide. But the whole point here is don't blindly ape into tokens. Make sure you've done at least a bit of research because the thing is, if you have understanding in a project, you're, you're not likely to capitulate and dump it. So if you actually understand the thesis behind Render, and you understand the opportunity, or you understand Solana, or any coin in the market, and you truly understand it and align with it, you're less likely to sell during dump because you have conviction. If you haven't researched, you likely haven't been able to build your conviction. And if you don't have conviction, it's very, very easy to weak hand. And what you should actually be doing is buying during dips, major dips, for quality coins, you should be accumulating, but you won't accumulate if you don't have conviction in that coin. You're going to be too scared to. Until it starts pumping again, then you're going to want to buy. So researching can cut all of this out of the equation and actually allow you to be more objective with your decisions. Lesson number four is don't over-rotate. Honestly, this was my biggest mistake of 2021 and maybe the most important mistake that I'll highlight in today's video. In 2021... I made some insane profits. I made 30 X's on meme coins, my Solana position, my Luna position, my Fanta position. They were all exploding. Solana is a good example that I'll, I'll use today. I think I run it up like a 10, 15 X. So let's just say I turned 10 K into hundred K to keep the math simple. These aren't the exact numbers. Then I rotated that 100K, let's say, into Phantom, made another 5X. So now I've made 500K, right? Then I put Phantom into, into Luna and then I 2X'd right? Now I'm on a million dollars. Then Luna crashes. And even though I've hit three successful trades in a row, I, I hit the successful Solana trade, the Phantom trade, and then the Luna trade. All it took was one big crash to unwind six months of good work. I don't know if that's exactly how it ended up going, but it's a pretty synonymous story with what actually happened to me in 2021. And it was making insane profits, but constantly rotating into altcoins. Big mistake. Never do it. I've learned my lesson. i stringently take profits these days. And what I actually do is I have a predetermined rotational system now. So let's say, as you can see in front of you, you make 15K on a meme coin trade like Whiff. What you want to do is rotate a pre-allocated amount into stables. It might be half or it might be a third if you're earlier in the cycle. The next third could go into Bitcoin if your goal is to accumulate more Bitcoin. That's one of my goals. And then you could put the other 5K back into the market. So I'm not saying don't rotate because look, we all need liquidity to seek new opportunities. I'm totally cognizant of that. But it's wise to predetermine a smaller allocation that you'll rotate instead of being prone to rotating in that entire 15K worth of profits back into the market because that's how you get wrecked. Crypto is a game of hot potato. You can juggle the potato across 20 altcoins, roll profits into profits into profits into profits. The second you drop the potato, you lose all those profits if you're not siphoning off into stable coins. So important. Really want to stress that message. Lesson number five, don't get greedy. I can't express this enough. Extreme green days are actually the best time to take bull market profits off the table. I actually did a tweet a few days ago saying I was de-risking a lot of my altcoin positions. I got a bit of hate for that in the comments, but it ended up being pretty close to the top. This isn't me saying I'm a genius and I called the top and blah, blah, blah. The point I'm trying to make here is that I noticed the market was getting frothy. I noticed these meme coin pre-sales, whiff on the sphere, all this stuff happening. And, and I said, look, this is getting frothy. Let me just take some profits. Worst case, the market keeps running. I'm still exposed to the market. Best case, I've bought myself buying power because now I have stable coins because I skim profits off the top to reinvest when the market drops. And that, look, is subsequently what happened. But that's not the point. Whether I did or didn't do this three days ago isn't actually the point. The point is you should be taking profits on extreme green days. And you should be buying in on extreme red days. Because if you think the overall trajectory is upwards, you have one goal. 
Get your cost basis across your altcoins as low as possible. Your goal is to have the lowest weighted average buy price. The way to do this is to always make sure you have sufficient stable coins on the side, dry powder to go in on big capitulation days to buy into the market and actually set some limit orders as well in case you get these wicks like on Solana and this gives you an opportunity to buy in. So with something like Sol, this period, ladder out some profits. This period, ladder back in. This period, ladder out some profits. This period, you can ladder back in. That's generally what I'll do. Now in terms of laddering in and out, that is not me taking my entire position and going in and out. That is stupid. You'll never be able to time the top or time the bottom. This will be clipping maybe 20%. 30 if you want to be aggressive. For some people, it'll be 10. It's just about ensuring I have enough stable coins. That's it. But the only way you're going to stick to this is if you're not greedy. If you're greedy, you're not going to want to take profits and you won't have dry powder to buy back in. This There's an exception here and that's if you've got a really well-paying job that's consistently paying you capital, then maybe in a bull run, you don't even need to take aggressive profits on the way up. You can afford to wait a bit because you've got that income supplementing your portfolio, but I know a lot of you don't. And even myself, a lot of my income is now reliant on crypto. Yes, I've got other investments across things like stocks, real estate, but that stuff still proportionate to my portfolio isn't giving me enough income to subsidize the losses that I would take on a drawdown. So I have to take profits. Lesson number six, and this is a really valuable point as well. I mean, all of this is valuable, but there's a few here that are really important, including this one. Don't fade strength in the market. One thing that's super difficult for a lot of people to comprehend in a bull run is the insane strength that the market can actually exhibit, especially on the strong altcoins. And these altcoins can be very irrational. The beauty of a bull run, and this is why it's such an opportunity, is valuations can go sky high, irrationally high, and go much higher than you think on certain altcoins. But the only way that you can actually effectively play this game in a bull run is to make sure you're in the strength. You're in the leaders, not the laggards. If you're trying to chase laggards the whole bull run, you're probably going to end up with a very underwhelming portfolio. But if you're not chasing strength, but being in the strength, there's a difference and I'll show you why in a second. This is a massive tool for you to use to your advantage. So you don't want to fight the trend in crypto. You always want to go with the trend. So what do I do? Every time there's a major dip, I take note of what rebounds the strongest. Today, we're seeing a few examples, meme coins, deep in slash AI coins bouncing. Phantom's doing really well. Some of the L1s like Aptos, Sui, say a little bit, but not as strong as the others. These are doing well. Some of the AI coins have bounced as well. You want to look for where the market is gravitating towards when it does buy a dip. So when the market dips, this is the market showing its hand and telling you these are the strong coins. Now, why is this important? Well, because when the market goes on its next leg up after a dip, the coins that rebound the strongest, there's a very strong likelihood that these actually end up outperforming because these are the coins exhibiting the strength. So when you are accumulating during a dip, I don't accumulate the coins that are looking trash. I accumulate the coins that on the prior dip, so you're working one dip behind at all times, on the prior dip exhibited strength and then are also showing similar signs on this dip. So you should actually just build up a list an accumulation list on trading view over time of the coins that are showing strength. So then when a dip comes, bang, you can pull the trigger. And in some cases you'll set limit orders because the thing is sometimes the capitulation wicks actually give you the best risk reward like this one here, but you're not going to be able to catch this. It happens in like a few minutes. It's a wick down and then the price goes back up and you might be asleep. Not all of you can be in front of the computer or there. I'm totally cognizant of that. Neither can I. So what you do is you set limit orders across exchanges. And you can actually set limit orders in order to buy in. So I'll give you an example on BitGet. If I want to buy Solana, what I would do is I would go and I would work out the key levels on the timeframes that I trade on. I like the four hourly and the daily for this example. Weekly is a little bit too far away. And I would say, okay, 126 to 130 is a region I'm really interested in. So what I would do is I would go and I would set my orders at 126, 130. I would set some orders here. I would enter the amount and I would set that order. That is not going to trigger until Solana goes down to 120. Now, it may never go there, but if you do get a capitulation wick like this, where the market just wicks down quick and then recovers, you may not have had time if you didn't have orders, but if you did, you're going to hit this order. 
So that is something that I'll actively do. I'll have limit order set on strong coins in case I do get that massive capitulation wick sell-off. These often are the best times to get entries on coins. You're not always going to hit them, but it's just a strategy I don't see many people implementing that if you've got some spare capital, and this is why I preach taking profit, so you have stable coins on the side, you can take advantage of these capitulations. Oh, and by the way, if you like the way that the BitGet UI looks and works, you can trade on BitGet and get a $30,000 deposit bonus via signing up using the link in the description below. It's an exclusive offer right now, a $10 airdrop plus a $30,000 bonus just for signing up. And this is somewhere where I actively set a lot of limit orders. I always spread across multiple exchanges to make it clear because different exchanges have different coins. Some have DCA bots that I prefer to others, etc. But for limit orders, I've always had a good time on BitGet and you can do it across a variety of tokens. I have heaps of listings, as you can see in front of you. Another website I use to track strong coins is Velo. You can actually sort by large mid caps and small caps to find the strong performers at any given time. You can see WIF in terms of the mid caps has been outperforming, MakerDAO outperforming, FET and Phantom. Some examples across the large caps in recent times, we've seen Sol outperforming, Aptos, AVAX. This tells you what you need to know in terms of the majors, mid caps and small caps as well on centralized exchanges. What are the coins exhibiting strength? You don't want to buy the ones down the bottom here during the dip. I wouldn't be buying Matic, Filecoin during the dip if they're exhibiting weakness like this. I would be more looking at buying these ones and that they're the ones that actually have a lot of crossover on, on my list. Another thing you can do is you can use banter bubbles. If you don't want to use banter bubbles, you can use CoinGecko and just search by 24 hour performance during a dip. This will also tell you what you need to know, but just be wary that it's going to base it on the last 24 hours price. So you kind of have to get a snapshot across a few different hours to work out what the coins are because sometimes they might wick and it might be an outlier. So don't make decisions across bubbles, Velo and CoinGecko. Don't make decisions on just one website alone. Tip number seven, don't outsmart yourself. This is a super simple one. Retail, when they come back into the market, they want to invest in things they can easily understand. If you are morally objected to things like meme coins, you're probably not as you're probably not going to do as well as the left curvers in the market. Although you can be on your L3 interoperability ZK aggregator high horse, it's not going to make you money. So sometimes you just got to submit to the narrative. Like like I've been buying Whiff. Do you think my Whiff is is as good as Rune? No. I like Rune and I like Whiff for different reasons. I like Whiff because I like the fact that retail likes Whiff. I like Rune because it has a very positive DeFi flywheel effect and it's one of the only bona fide ways to do cross-chain swaps. That's not as sexy for retail, Whiff sexy. So I keep that in mind and sometimes I don't outsmart myself. Part of my strategy is left curving it. Rule number eight, don't quit now. Now's not the time to quit. Bitcoin is literally one of the most popular sectors in traditional markets right now in terms of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. It's outperforming a lot of other ETFs, like from the real estate sector, industrials, treasuries, bonds. It's outperforming so many other ETFs in terms of flows. So this is not the time to quit. This is actually when things are just starting to get exciting. So look, I know bull runs... I know the thumbnail of the video says it's easy. It's easy if you follow the rules I'm giving you, but it's hard if you don't know the rules. If you're going in without a plan, and maybe if you didn't have experience from 2021 or 2017, it can be, it can be overwhelming. It can be hard. I'm trying to make it easy for you, and that's why I make these videos every day, but I totally accept that it can be hard. So if you're in that boat, just remember, now's not the time to quit. You've been through the hard part. FTX, Luna... Alameda, Voyager, a lot of retail capitulated. That's the hard part. Now is actually the easy part. So you've been through the hard part. So now, now is not the time to quit. If there was a time to quit and I could justify someone quitting, at least mentally, it was last year or the year before. Two final lessons. These aren't crypto specific. They're more in terms of life, but very important because crypto success and lifestyle go hand in hand. They really, really do. It's the first ones don't waste time. So this is a kind of controversial one. I'm speaking more to the sub 30 year olds here than I am. You know, if you're 40 or 50 and you've got a family, I think this is a very different conversation. If you're like me, I'm 23 years old. Make some damn sacrifices. Opportunities like this don't come around very often. Do you have university? Take a few months off, defer. Have a part-time job? How long's your runway? Go out partying on the weekends? 
Do you really need to do that? Like, seriously, question these things. I'm not saying it's a one-size-fits-all approach. We all have different financial situations. We all have different support networks. I get it. Some people have to spend all day working. I get it. That's life. But if that is you, don't waste away the weekends, which are your precious time to study and research and get better and improve on partying and drinking. I haven't had a drop of alcohol in five months. I'm 23. I've got money. I'm in Dubai, I could very well get sucked into that scene, but I've made a concerted effort to bunker down, focus on investing, focus on making content, focus on my goals, bettering myself, improving my health, because we've got our whole lives to party. If you can really maximize the next couple years, go and have your six month holiday, (laughs) go travel the world, go relax. Now's not the time to relax. Now there is not a, a, a minute to waste. Weekends are your chance to get ahead of your competition. Capitalism's PVP. Your competition is out there partying, drinking, and relaxing on weekends. That's an opportunity for you to get ahead of the competition. Unfortunately, that is what society's come to. Either you play ball or you fall behind. So you have an opportunity, maximize it. I understand for some it's harder with obligations, but at least least make an effort not to waste this bull run. Please, please, please. Lesson number 10, also lifestyle. Don't upgrade your lifestyle. Okay, I'm so guilty of this. This is something that I, I I put this in the thread and this video to almost remind myself just as much as I'm talking to you right now. But please, if you start making money in the bull run, especially if they're pay for paper profits and they're not, it's not actually in cash yet, please don't upgrade your lifestyle. Don't fly first class. Don't upgrade your apartment or your house. Don't buy a new car. Just compound your wealth. Invest your wealth. Once you've solidified that side of things, okay, then make your your splurgy purchases. Now I'm saying this to myself because I literally am so guilty of this. And this this is a lessons video. 2022, even in the bear market, I was so crazily just bullish on a quick recovery that I was churning through my, my, my savings that I could have been investing into the market on. Business class flights, lots of clothes, stupid purchases, Maybe minuscule now, but looking back on them, those amounts weren't minuscule because let's say I waste ten thousand dollars on lifestyle. Ten thousand easily would have ten x buying them. That would have been a hundred thousand dollars. So you got to think about it like that. What is the opportunity cost of that holiday or that flight? Now I'm guilty of this because I do like to live a good lifestyle, but it has to be within your means. So if your portfolio is worth a hundred thousand dollars, unless that's real money, you can't treat it like you've got a hundred thousand in cash. They're very different situations and cash flow is more important than um savings anyway so it's the amount of money that's churning through that's really going to dictate your lifestyle so don't upgrade it based on false profits and look in crypto it's actually very easy to get your wealth perception skewed i did a tweet i said i'll snuff at a 5k business class ticket but i'll happily punt it on a meme coin gamble it's so true it's like our morals are completely skewed like i'll literally put it into a crap meme coin but i'll like start seriously questioning it if it's like a real life decision. The other thing you got to look at, this was very interesting, this post, is the actual wealth distribution of net worth in the real world. If you are 30 to 34, you're in the 99th percentile if you're worth 900K. You're better than 50% of the population if you're worth more than 30K. Now, I'm not saying we should aim to be average. We should obviously aim to be in the top 1%. That should be the goal, right? But sometimes you do need to put it in perspective that the numbers we talk about and the gains we expect and just the expectations we have, they are misaligned from the reality of society, I would say. It's great to be misaligned because it means we're going for that 1% and I'm as misaligned as they come because I'm probably in the top 0.1%, but I'm always striving for more, but that's good. That's, you know, you need that hunger, you need that growth mindset, but keep wealth perception in the back of your mind. Just start to notice if, if your wealth perception is getting a little bit skewed. And, and I, I reflect on this regularly and often I have to pull myself back and be like, no, don't make that purchase. Don't be that reckless. This is crazy. You're in a fortunate position. Recalibrate. And sometimes that helps me also adjust risk. Sometimes that'll lead me to de-risking in crypto just a little bit to maintain some, some realism here. You shouldn't be 100% in crypto anyway. If you are, uh, please change things because that's just insane. Um, Obviously, this video is not financial advice. Make your own decisions. But look, I I think that's insane. If you have have 
even more than 50% in crypto is a lot. That's a big allocation. You're taking on big, big, big risk. Be aware, think, be aware crypto is a very risky industry. It's risky because there's massive opportunity, but it's not guaranteed. Nothing in crypto is guaranteed. These tips today should help you increase your EV, increase your edge, but I can't tell you where the market is going to go. I can just tell you the opportunity I think we have and the steps I would implement to take advantage of that opportunity. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments below what is your biggest mistake in crypto? What has been your biggest mistake? Either last bull run or so far, this bull run. What do you struggle with the most? That would actually really help me out as a creator because if I see lots of overlap with certain issues, I can actually go deeper into helping you rectify them. Like strat like if you struggle with taking profits, I can do more of a deep dive. If you struggle with DD, I can go into that more. So let me know what's your biggest issue slash biggest mistake in crypto. Let me know. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Peace out.